The month of April does belong to the NFL draft, but we're going to take a break from all the draft coverage for a brief moment on today's show and check out some free agency buzz revolving around your Atlanta Falcons. But before we get into all of that, we have one week left in our sub battle with the Seahawks channel and the Giants channel here at Chat Sports. Now we are ahead of Seahawks today. But we are trailing Giants now after one week and a two-week race. Let's catch Giants now. Let's finish number one. Hit that sub button to help us finish at the top. Now, the Falcons rumors on today's show are this. Bleacher Report released one free agent that each team should sign. So, for the Falcons, who do they select? Matthew Ioannidis, defensive tackle, most recently with the Carolina Panthers and was with the Washington football team before that. So we're going to break down this free agent target for the Falcons that Bleacher Report outlined. I'll give you my take and even my uh, opinion on who the Falcons should go after maybe instead. But first, here's what Bleacher Report said about signing Ioannidis. While the trio of Calais Campbell, Grady Jarrett, and David Onyemata is promising, the Falcons rotation needs a boost. Matt Ioannidis' peak is seemingly in the past, but the 29-year-old could be a quality backup with some versatility. He's totaled 75 tackles over the last two seasons. And this is where I kind of agree with Bleacher Report, but at the same time, I don't know if I'm all the way in like they are because Onyemata, Calais Campbell, and Grady Jarrett is a good rotation. But when it comes to giving Ioannidis some of those fourth reps, Maybe you'd rather go with a younger player, like a rookie, for example, right? Ioannidis seems to be a bit cooked at this point in his career. He was okay with the Panthers last season. I remember there was some trade buzz revolving around him. Nothing ever, materi nothing ever materialized. Now, when you look at what he's done so far in the NFL, his stats the first four seasons... He had a pretty good start right after a uh, special teamer of the year in 2016. But then four and a half sacks, seven and a half sacks, eight and a half sacks from 2017 all the way through 2019. So if you're getting that player, this is a player I would like. The issue is I don't think you're finding the 2017 to 18 to 19 Matthew Ioannidis. Now, if you are, yeah, it's a April free agent signing. You're not really poning up a ton of money. So the only thing he's costing you is just reps that maybe could have been given to a developmental player, right? Someone you might see as a future with your team rather than a one-year vet minimum-ish contract. So be the GM for me. Would you want Matt Ioannidis? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no in the comments section below. Sound off for me down in the comments. Now, since that 2019 season, what has he done? Not a whole lot. 32 games since then. Five sacks, 82 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, and 24 QB hits. Sure, the Falcons, I think, could use Ioannidis, right? And Calais Campbell in a rotation. That equals one full pass rusher with where Campbell's at in his career, and Ioannidis kind of on the way down. So I'm bought in at that level. But at the same time, I think there could be better ways to spend one more free agent signing. Now, what would the repercussions be of signing someone like Ioannidis? They're not major, but the Falcons adding Matt Ioannidis would make it seem like they are going to go the veteran route for the defensive line, and then Christian Gonzalez or Devin Witherspoon with the eighth overall pick in this year's draft. So that's sort of the hidden meaning of, oh, they're adding another veteran defensive lineman. Maybe they're going to go cornerback instead because they are falling in love with the corners in this year's draft, and they don't think Tyree Wilson, their dream realistic target, is going to be there at number eight. So pick one for me. What position will the Falcons draft at number eight? Is it going to be an edge rusher of sorts, or is it going to be a cornerback? If they sign someone like Ioannidis, it doesn't necessarily kill the idea of drafting an edge rusher, but maybe that signals they like cornerback a lot, so they're going to push off edge rusher till next year and go with the best player on their big board, which is a CB. Now, speaking of the draft, it is, what, three weeks away at this point? It's going to be here before you know it, so make sure to get the official Atlanta Falcons 2023 NFL draft hat using our exclusive link, chatsports.com slash ATL hat. Wear the same hat that... I don't know, Tyree Wilson, Christian Gonzalez, someone's going to be putting on the stage in Kansas City. When you use that link, it's in the comments and the description of today's video. 
My opinion on this would be the Falcons should consider targeting a different position in free agency. I don't think that defensive line, even though I have begged for more pass rushers, I know this doesn't actually really check that box. So what position would I rather see them go after? What about a left guard, right? I mean, look at this Falcons offensive line. You are firmly squared away at tackle between Matthews and McGarry. You have one of the best guards in football in Chris Lindstrom. You have a optimistic project in the works right now at center. Left guard is really the only spot that Atlanta needs to beef up a little bit, right? They need a left guard very bad. No offense to Colby Gossett. Bump coming Georgia, drafted by the Vikings, played at the Cardinals for a little bit, some practice squad spots here and around, and he, what, started four games last year at left guard. He's been a serviceable fill-in, but I think if you find a left guard, no matter who the quarterback is next year, they're going to be very successful with a lot of good, prote good protection in front of them. So I've got two players to consider when it comes to adding a left guard. Roger Saffold, former Tennessee Titan, and Dalton Reisner, a former second-round pick for the Broncos out of Kansas State. So let's look at these guys one by one, starting with the former Buffalo Bill and Tennessee Titan, Roger Saffold. Now, good old Roger last year, as PFF graded him through 15 games, did not benefit a ton for Josh Allen. 43.7 overall grade. Decent pass blocking. It's not even decent. I just lied to you. Bad pass blocking, 51 and worse run blocking. So he was brutal for the Bills to put it la to last year to put it lightly. Now, Dalton Reisner, on the other hand, not so shabby, okay? Especially when you compare him to those numbers right there. But first, what did Saffold do the year before that, right? When he was with the Tennessee Titans? Well, 80, 853 snaps, overall grade of 69.3, nice, and much better than it was with Buffalo last season. So, Maybe he just does not block well in the Northeast and he gets, get, needs to get back to the Southeast. So 2022 was the worst year of his career. And maybe because of that, you can kind of get him on a bargain or you'll look at it as we're the big dumb dumbs. We just signed him after the worst year of his career. What were we thinking? Now, the other guard to consider is Dalton Reisner. So PFF grades for Reisner last year, 61.1 overall, much better. 72.6 pass blocking, just doesn't have the quickness in the run department. 53.4 run blocking grade. So for Dalton Reisner, he was a second round pick out of Kansas State. Four-year contract with the Broncos. He was a four-year starter for them. He was average, right? He was middle of the road. Could you improve from him? Absolutely. And that's more or less why Denver did not bring him back, because they felt you're not the worst problem on our team. You're not the biggest problem. You're not the worst left guard in football. But we know what you are as a player, and we want to do better. And there are teams out there where Dalton Reisner is an improvement. For Denver, they felt they had a bigger improvement in signing a guy like Ben Powers from the Ravens, so that's why they didn't bring Reisner back. So if you had to pick a left guard for me, who would it be? Would it be Saffold, the longer vet, who's had some really good years under his belt, and you're trying to squeeze another guy, another year or two out of him? Or would it be Dalton Reisner, who has just been sort of middle of the road? And that's fine if your starting guy is way worse than that. I would rather go with Dalton Reisner. Now, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say concerning, but um, puzzling that he's still a free agent right now. So maybe that means you can get him for cheaper than what Atlanta thought his market would be back in March when free agency really kicked off. So we're going to see a flurry of signings leading up to the draft, some lower-level ones across the league, and especially afterwards once they know what their updated needs are through the draft. So if Atlanta is zeroing in on one or two guards and they get picked before the Falcons are on the clock, plan B might go, all right, let's go sign Reisner now because he's not gonna, he's not going to cost as much as he would back in March, and we didn't find a good option in the draft. But I would pick Reisner over Saffold. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have not subscribed and you enjoyed today's video, consider giving us a subscription. It's a completely free one, and you get the best Falcons content.